Hi everyone, welcome to this session. The following talk is called "Reborn Clock Engine with Ryzen," presented by Shen Feng Lu. Please join me in welcome speaker. Hi everyone, I'm pleased to give this talk to all of you. Today, my topic is "Reborn Clock Engine with Ryzen." My name is Shen Feng Lu. I'm a core member of Quark Engine. In this talk, we will walk through the complete process of replacing Quark Engine's analysis library. We will first talk about what Quark Engine is and why it helps with malware analysis. Then we will move on to an issue to the future of Quark. After that. We will introduce a perfect tool to solve this issue, Ryzen. I will explain the power of this tool and the building progress of the analysis library. Finally, I will evaluate the performance of the Ryzen-based analysis library. Quark is an Android malware storyteller. It's a role-based system. That gives an overview of malware. With Quark's help, the analyst can give a malware story in minutes. Here is an example demonstrating the usage of Quark. Quark summary report, shown as shown in the picture, is the best way to give a glance at APK. This report lists an APK's potential behaviors. Let's look at his content. The, be the behavior indexes are in the first column. The descriptions of each behaviors are in the second column. And the confidence of an APK performing a, a behavior are located in the third column. With that information, we can find lots of potential clues in an APK. For example, take pictures and uh, read the sensitive data of a device. It significantly boosts up malware reverse in engineering. That's the power of Quark Engine. Quark, Quark Engine uses an analysis library, AngelGuard, to support essential functions. AngelGuard is an open source Python package for parsing Android files. It is the APK information provider of Quark Engine. With AngelGuard, Quark can adjust malware's behaviors. To explain better, AngelGuard mainly passes the following data. The app, the app permission, the method and Android APIs list, and the relations between methods and, <coughs> and the inher inherent relationships between classes, and the bytecode. However, AngelGuard is not actively maintained now. As you can see in the slide, last November, the author of AngelGuard announced that he was no longer working on it. The future of Quark is in danger. The power is uh, uh, sorry, the problem is urgent. AngelGuard gradually loses support to the popular Android SDKs. Therefore, we made a difficult decision to replace the analysis library of Quark. And quickly, we found a candidate for our library, Ryzen. Ryzen is a well-known open source command line tool for reverse engineering. It has a robust community to support the entire project. Also, it analyzes executables on most platforms, including Android. 
Last but not least, it provides APIs to integrate with Python projects. Overall, Resin is a perfect solution to replace Integral. The following is an illustration of analyzing, analyzing an IPK with Resin. In this example, we want to investigate a method bytecode in an IPK. The first command tells Quark, uh, sorry, the first command tells Ryzen to open the IPK with a built-in analysis. The analysis allows Ryzen to give more information about the IPK. The second command, IS, lists all the IPK symbols like classes, methods, and fields. We then select an inter interesting one to perform a further check like this. The last command, PDF, uh, is used in the selected method address. It lists all bytecodes in the given methods. The output shows that the method has two bytecodes, evoke direct and return void. So, Ryzen does more than printing bytecodes. Most of Angel Gas features are supported by Ryzen. For example, Angel Gas collects a list of methods and APIs. We replace it with the mentioned command IS. Angel Gas also passes the relationship between methods. Angular does the job well with two commands, ixt and ixff. Angular also passes the inheritance relationship between classes. The command icg is the best choice for that. Finally, Angular lists bytecodes in a given method. Rather than achieve that with the command PDF. We have introduced five Ryzen commands to replace AngelGuard. Now, we can start to build an analysis library. The analysis library needs Ryzen, uh, needs RZPipe, a Ryzen APK for scripting. Oh, sorry. A Ryzen API for scripting. RZPub is a scripting interface for, for programs accessing Ryzen. It supports many programming languages, including Python. The usage of RZPub is simple. It has three power functions, which are shown in the right picture. As, uh, the first function rzpipe.open creates a, a Ryzen instance they open a given file. The API returns a proxy object for developer to communicate with the corresponding process. The second API rz.cnd is a member of the proxy object. It passes the given command to a reference process. Then it returns the execution result as a string. The last API, rc.cndj, is similar to the above one, but it passes the string into a JSON object. This API needs to cooperate with the JSON variant of Ryzen commands. 
So, what's the JSON variant of Ryzen command? It's one of Ryzen's excellent features designed for integrations. To explain better, it's a command set that ends with a character J. This kind of commands are projection data. With the feature and the scripting and the mentioned scripting API, the integrations can pass the output of Ryzen easily. Therefore, we add a surface to the commands we found in the previous slide. Except for ICG, there's no JSON variant for it. Finally, we are all set to write an analysis library. The first function of the library is listing all methods and enjoy APIs. The command isj does the job well. So let's focus on the right picture. We obtain the proxy object by the first light. And we found the symbol list by passing isj to it. In the left picture, is the output of this command isj. It gives an array of JSON data. Each of them, each, each of JSON object in the JSON array is a symbol in the IPK. However, a symbol can stain anything in the IPK like classes, methods, or fields. We need to use the key type to fill out all methods or functions. Then we exact the information of a method by the corresponding JSON object. By the key real name, we can find its belonging class and its signatures. If you want to find the method address, you can find the value of key, B-A-D-D-R. That means the virtual address. The second function of an analysis library is getting all calls to a given method. In the left picture is the output of command AXTJ. The command delivers an array of JSON objects. Each of them represents a cross-reference to the method. Therefore, the passing logic is straightforward. After, pass after passing AXTJ to the Ryzen process, we investigate the JSON objects. The key from is the address of the calling methods. We can search it in the method list to find the corresponding method object. Then we can use the object to find to get more information, such as the methods that the methods signatures, and so on. The third function is getting all calls from the given methods. The passing logic is straightforward too. The output of the command xffj is an array of JSON objects. Each of them represents a course reference. The address of the called method is the value of the key too. So after passing xffj to the resin process, let's look at the JSON uh, let's look at each JSON object. Find a key to, to and such as value in a method list. We then have information about the method. 
The fourth function is listing the inheritance relationship between classes. The output of a command SCG contains two type of line. <coughs> Let's start with AA. HGN defines a parent classes or child classes. Less with AGE is the link between a parent class to the child classes. <coughs> so we can describe the relationship for a dictionary. In the red pictures, first divide the output into multiple lines. Then use a if statement to record the parent class as the key. And it's a child value a child classes as the value. And that's the uh, inheritance relationship between classes. The final function is getting all bytecodes in a given method. Command pdfj outputs a JSON object with a rich method information. We adjust the key OPS apps to find a list of JSON objects representing the bytecodes. There is a lot of information in each object. We can look at the smiley representations by finding the key uh, DISASN. Oh, finally, congratulations. We have used Ryzen to implement the crucial functions in an analysis library. Next, I will going to talk about three challenges we met during the development. The first challenge is passing APKs information like app name and permissions. Enjoy uses a binary name, a binary file named Enjoy Manifest to store such information. However, since Ryzen does not support passing this file, an additional parser is needed. The second challenge involves complex APK analysis. Complex APKs are often composed of multiple text files. However, during the development, Ryzen didn't support multi-text analysis. The third challenge is missing the relationship between methods. Quark used cross-reference to address an APK's behaviors, but we found that the result of cross-reference in Ryzen is incorrect in some cases. Fortunately, Ryzen is a tool with rich features and community support. With Ryzen's help, the challenge didn't obstruct our de development of on the analysis library. Uh, the first challenge is introduce a print mode. It is one of Ryzen's SN features. It allows users to interpret binary data in custom ways. With this feature, we can describe and join manifest so a set of simple structures. And it significantly reduces our work to build a parser. After reporting the second problem to the community, we soon got a positive reply. 
a code developer provide a temporary solutions and arrange to arrange it to work on it. As surprisingly, Ryzen added this feature in a few weeks. For the last problem, missing relationship between methods. We opened an issue to call for help. The community proved that it's a bug of Ryzen itself and put it to be resolved. According to a core developer of Ryzen, the issue involved lots of refracting in Ryzen. We expect it will take months to resolve. However, the development of the patch was incredible incredibly fast. The community fixed it in only one month. What we want to say is, thank you Ryzen. We all appreciate the rapid access from Ryzen. Here is the correspond uh, here is the comparison of the Andrew Best library and the Ryzen best one. Currently, the Ryzen best library has a 20% bias on the analysis results. We are still trying to solve, um, solve problems on it. We will talk about it in the end of the slide. Now, let's move on the performance issue. In the very beginning, the speed of the Ryzen best analysis library was unacceptable. The library was 10 times slower than the Angel Guard basis one. Therefore, we also improved the speed of the analysis library. We chose the firm graph to evaluate the speed of the library. Frame graph is a visualization proposed by Brendan Gregg. It illustrates the relationship between execution time and frame stacks. We use Austin, a lightweight Python provider based on C, to record the frame stack. Both tools are available on their GitHub page. Here is the generated frame graph. In this graph, each box is a method. The y-axis is the frame stack. The x-axis is the overall execution time of a program. The box in the graph is a method in the stack. The y of it, the y of it is a proportion of CPU time. Not that the order is not significant. We look at uh, we look for the most CPU intensive method, and we found that the bottleneck is passing the permissions and the methods from RPCAS. Both of them occupy 90% of the overall execution time. We left find both points to one problem, the repeated calculations on fixed results. Also, the repetition of passing the permissions causes a memory issue. It creates the three redundant lesson progress. Fortunately, the solution is simple. Since both methods returns long changing data, we use the catch tool building in Python. We solve this problem by applying the catch property decorator to both methods. And surprisingly, the CPU time set out to 60% on average. In epicast with smaller sizes, the CPU time set up to net about 90%. There are some problems to be solved in the future. The method list given by Ryzen is different from the one given by Andrew Gar. Second, 
Let's miss the cross reference to Android APIs. Third, we need to improve its performance on memory and the CPU. We also had unexpected finding during the development. We developed a reverse tended analysis idea. Also, we have opportunities to contribute to the Ryzen community. Opel replacing the analysis library gave us lots of fun. We are excited to fight against the upcoming obstructions. Here are the references to all the mentioned tools in this talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Shenfeng, for the great talk. All right, so now let's move on the Q&A session. Okay, so uh, uh, I have not seen see, uh, any question for you. So uh, I know I have a quick question for Shenfeng. Uh, what, what, what is the most difficult part, you think? when you try to uh, replace the core library. Okay. Okay, thank you, Junwei. So, uh, in my opinion, the most difficult part is finding the most perfect function in Ryzen. Oh, I mean, the most, per most fit commands in Ryzen to implement the analysis library. Uh, unlike in Android handles most of the low level issues in the uh, binary format like like text files or Android XML formats, uh, Ryzen tends to provide information as much as it can pass. So, so, uh, so lots of information provided by Ryzen, which uh, which in, is the uh, which looks like more close to the binaries, and uh, it needs a rich knowledge, a rich background to, and uh, it needs a rich knowledge to the file format that Ryzen is passing. For example, in Ryzen, if we want to pass the uh, a text file. To know the Android API and uh, use certified methods. Uh, in Ryzen, they are both point, both uh, they are both addresses. However, and also they are both pointers, and they may look like a, the same in the Ryzen output. However, they are points to different uh, different structure. They require diff different. Uh, they need, they need to be passed in different ways. So I think this is the most, most challenging part for me, because before writing any script to uh, use the Ryzen to implement the analysis library, we, uh, we need to understand, uh, I need to understand the text file format in advance and uh, I need to understand the Android XML format. Uh, even even I need to write a uh, uh, additional parser to make the parsing is easily. Thank you. Okay, great. Sound, sounds like really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, this session, uh, uh, due to the time, uh, this session, uh, she comes to an end. And thank you, Shen Feng. Thank you. Okay, okay. so uh, thanks for uh, your listening. And